Hi, in this video we're going to talk about white blood cells and platelets. So the white blood cells, are also you can also call them WBC, WBC or um, you can call them leukocytes. Leuco means white. And if you look at a blood sample, you're going to see that there's many, the white blood cells are much lower in number, but they're really easy to look at and tell the difference between white blood cells and red blood cells. It says white blood cells are usually larger, they have a nucleus, they don't have hemoglobin, so they're not red, which is why we call them white, but they're kind of colorless. And um, there actually are a bunch of different kinds of white blood cells. And so here, here's a kind of a rundown on all the different kinds, and we're not going to learn all those, but you will if you take a, the next level of anatomy classes. The main function of white blood cells is they fight infection, and they're really an important part of the immune system. So not only do they fight infection, but they actually even fight against things like um, our own abnormal cells like um, cancers. So your own immune system protects you or helps prevent cancer formation and the white blood cells play a big role in there. Other things that the, the white blood cells are doing, um, one of the things that white blood cells are doing to protect us is some of them are phagocytes and conduct phagocytosis, which means they're able to engulf things like bacteria or um, abnormal cells or dead and dying cells in our body and removing them, destroying them. Um, they can also, some white blood cells produce antibodies. And we've talked a little bit about antibodies um, that we said so, that these are proteins produced by some white blood cells and they stick to antigens. Now, antigens are foreign proteins or something abnormal. So a bacterial cell comes into our body our white blood cells recognize an antigen, a foreign protein, and the antibodies stick to it, and that's a signal for phagocytes to come and remove that um, antigen. This vi video talks a little bit about, shows you a little bit about how lysosomes um, help with phagocytosis. It's short, and you might want to watch that. So here's a lot about types of white blood cells. Um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about some of the things that happen when, when things go wrong with white blood cells. Um, here it's talking about a disease called severe combined immunodeficiency. And this is a, a disease that is in, an inherited disease that's a failure of our white blood cells that um, prevents them from being able to defend our defend the body from um, pathogens. So it says without, uh, with the, there's an enzyme that has a problem and without that enzyme the body cannot fight infections. So generally what happens is this missing enzyme, they say they give it about twice weekly, but um, it's not a way, it's not a reliable way to protect that individual. Um, this is that disease that you might have heard of like um, the boy in the bubble disease. And I, I'm uh, I, I have a friend that has someone in their family that has this disease, a child, and that child really has very few opportunities to be able to go out and meet other people because they can get sick so easily. So the, ultimately you would need to get a bone marrow transplant um, to, to have this, your body make new white blood cells. I'm going to go back to this picture in section 6.1. I showed you this when we talked about red blood cells, um, where blood cells are made. Again, in the bone marrow, we have these stem cells that are um, the precursor to all of our blood cells. And so what you can see here, um, we talked about how certain stem cells make red blood cells, but they also are involved in making all the different kinds of white blood cells. So in order if you have if there are white blood cells that are not forming normally because of a genetic error you might transplant new bone marrow and therefore new stem cells into that patient where they can make white blood cells that function normally so that's what you would do with somebody with SCID let's see if there was anything else um, the other thing I wanted to talk about as far as di disorders of white blood cells has to do with the, what we've all heard of a disease called leukemia. And leukemia means you have too many white blood cells. And that actually sounds like, oh, well, that might be good because you, um, 
you can have a super um, vigorous immune system and you can um, fight every possible infection. But when a person has leukemia, not only do they have too many white cells, but the white cells are abnormal. And so they're not able to fight infections normally. And, um, and so there's that prefix also, leuk, meaning white. Um, so again, if I go back to that um, picture in section 6.1, if somebody has leukemia, you can have all sorts of problems. So your white blood cells aren't forming normally. So um, that can cause the person to get infections easily. So sometimes you know someone has leukemia just because they've gotten a lot of infections. But when you're making a lot of white blood cells, because the red blood cells, the white blood cells, and the platelets are all made from the same stem cells in the bone marrow. If you make way too many white cells, if you have leukemia, you're gonna make fewer red cells and fewer platelets. So another sign that someone might have leukemia, oh, they're going to the doctor because they're so exhausted. And they find out, wow, they don't have very many red cells, but they've got a lot of white cells. They're tired, they're exhausted because they don't have enough red cells. or Platelets are involved in blood clotting. Um, if the patient is bruising very easily, just getting bruises all the time, you're making way too many white cells, so you're not making enough platelets. And this can happen because the red cells, white cells, and platelets are all made from the same stem cells. So a person with leukemia can have all sorts of um, signs that they have this disease. I think I'm gonna go on, let's go on to platelets. Platelets are a third of our three types of formed elements. So we have red blood cells, white blood cells, and now platelets, which are also called thrombocytes. Now it turns out, so um, a, a platelet looks like a plate, but it's a let, platelet, a piece of a plate. So they actually um, turns out, in fact, I'm going to go back to that picture in 6.1 again. Um, if you look at all the you look at the red cells, white cells, but look at the, the uh, platelets are really tiny. And it turns out that there's these um, precursor cells to platelets and they break up into little pieces and we have these little fragments and they're actually not whole cells, they're just pieces of cells. And those are the platelets and they're important in blood clotting. There's actually more platelets than white blood cells, but um, because they're small, you might not notice them in a blood smear. Um, so they are involved in blood clotting, and what I want to show you is, here's an example of, oh, you cut a blood vessel, and he, these little things are supposed to be the platelets and some red blood cells. Well, one of the first things that happens is the platelets start, um, start making a plug, stopping the bleeding, and there's a chemical reaction that where the um, one of the proteins in blood called uh, prothrombin, I'm, I'm sorry, one of the proteins in blood, I'm going to skip that first part, called fibrinogen, um, is turned into, this is a soluble protein, something dissolved in blood, and it's turned into fibrin threads. Remember when we mentioned plasma, we said it has fibrinogen, which is a clotting protein. So um, it, when, when the um, blood vessels cut, you ultimately convert this insoluble protein into a I mean, soluble protein into an insoluble protein. And so you get these threads that form and clump all the platelets together and really help stop bleeding. And so here's a picture with red blood cells and um, lots of these fibrin threads invo involved in helping stop a blood clot. Disorders related to blood clotting, there's this one called thrombocytopenia. Um, penia means a lower amount, okay, leukemia, emia means a high amount, enia means a low amount. So, or, yeah, so you don't have enough thrombocytes or platelets, so your blood doesn't clot very well and you get a lot of bruising. And that can a lot of times be the sign of leukemia because you make too many white cells, so you don't make enough platelets. Um, a genetic disease related to blood clotting is hemophilia, and that can involve the platelets and other clotting factors, but um, it's a disease that, that is inherited and um, it can cause life-threatening 
um, bleeding in the patients that have it because they don't, they're not able to clot their blood effectively. I'm going to end there.